Hi, I'm Holly Cates, personal stylist and style coach extraordinaire. Hi, I'm Nolan Meter, celebrity stylist, shopping messiah, and accessory addict. We are the best friends that you never knew that you needed. We are the industry insiders and fashion's odd couple. In both of our everyday lives and at industry events, we see the best and unfortunately the worst in clothing and style. We are fashion partners in crime dedicated to stopping the most heinous of all fashion crimes on the street, the runways, and beyond. Join us as we take you inside our world, spilling the secrets of our experiences in the industry and inside our minds, judging people in the most loving way possible most of the time, and stopping <laughs> fashion criminals dead in their crocs. It's more important than just the do's and don'ts. Jump on the Hot Mess Express as we teach you how to be your best and most stylish self. Hey, 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 what is up? What's going on? This is a Fashion Crimes Podcast. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist. Hopefully, the only personal stylist that you know and the only Holly that you know and like. I'm with my bestie, my best gay, my stylist, Mr. Nolan Meter. What is up, Nolan? What's going on? What is going on? We're hanging out today, talking smack talking about people, talking about what we're doing, talking about where we're going. And um, this brought up a very sensitive subject with Nolan because um, he's got a lot of beef. What's your beef, Nolan? What's your fashion beef? Well, no, it's summer. I mean, so now it's summer and everyone's planning, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people are planning their summer travels. And being from Maine, you know, where I grew up is a very touristy place in the summer, you know, like the bushes have a house very, you know, very nearby. And it's where a lot of people come to vacation, but it like irks me, especially here. Right. Because in Maine, it is a much more casual beach. Like it's still, you know, beach homes here are beautiful and very expensive and fabulous and whatever, just like they are in Cape Cod and Nantucket and wherever they're obviously a little different. It's a different vibe, right? Like if you go to the Hamptons, you're going not just for the beach, but for the parties and this, the shopping and the restaurants and like the sort of the crowd. And it's the same thing with like Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. And then Cape Cod, you sort of go for the beaches. Or if you're gay, you go to Provincetown and like do a bunch of Coke, <laughs> you know, or like in Maine, a lot of the time, like I, I like to say that people come here when they want to not have to worry about wearing Cavalli to the beach. Because like if you go to the Hamptons, like you're, everyone is watching what you wear on the beach. Everyone's like, Ooh, is that Chanel? And here people just go to the beach. I mean, there are people like I was having coffee actually right down the street from the Bush compound um, last week. And this like very chic French woman walks by with an Hermes bag and this cute little Isabel Morant sweater. I was like, look at you go. But she wasn't going to the beach. She no, was just no, no, walking no. around. Okay. No, okay. but still, I mean, it's not like this is a place that you walk around in sweatpants all day. Like it's not, that's not, I hear you. you know, what bothers me are people. And I see this all the time. One, I just don't believe men should ever wear flip-flops unless you're at the beach or at the pool. And it's so ridiculous because when I was younger, I used to have every flip-flop under the sun. I had Valentino rock stud ones. Yeah, <laughs> I did. They were in the lime green. All right. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. I had a pair that. of Prada ones. Okay. Okay. So I kind of have PTSD from my Prada flip-flop situation because there's someone who is genuinely one of my least favorite human beings on the entire planet, just because I find them so disingenuous that it just it kills me. Like it just, one of those, it just gets under my skin. Cause I think it's so disingenuous it, it a former friend of my mother's and um, I will never forget this. They had a new puppy. Mm-hmm. And when we were at their house in the summer one year, and the puppy had ch- chewed through my Prada flip-flops. Oh, now, hell what would you do no. if that happened? Your dog chewed. What would you do if your if your dog chewed through someone's shoes? What would the first words out of your mouth be? It should be, "Oh my god, I'll buy you a new pair." I'm so sorry. Oh my god, I'm totally mortified. I'll, I'll, I'll order you a new pair. I'm so sorry. Da, 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 oh my you, god. And I would of course say, "No, don't worry about it. They're just shoes." right? That's the normal thing to do, but you at least need to offer because that's the right thing to do. Do you know what the response was? Sorry, don't leave your shoes on the floor. No, it was, ugh, I don't know why you would spend so much money on flip-flops. Oh, so now you're scarred forever. And this is a woman covered in David Yerman jewelry, which mind you, I mean, clearly, you know, money doesn't buy taste, but anyway, sorry. I'm still scarred of it. Like that peeved me more than I, and I it's been literally eight years and I'm still angry. Like, I'm still angry. It's like that Sex in the City episode. It where, literally is. It's like yeah. with, with the Manolo Blahniks. Like, people, someone was being judgmental of her, of her. I was being judged for a pair of flip-flops. Bitch, shut up. 
<laughs> whatever. And you know what? Maybe they're nice. Maybe maybe she's nice now. I don't know. But it just the whole thing seems very disingenuous to me. And it really irks me. It's just a manners thing. Again, I would have said, no, don't worry about it. They're just shoes. But you need to at least say, oh my God, my dog should never have done this. I'm so sorry. But nowadays I would never wear flip-flops. I just don't, unless I'm at the beach or the pool. Like I love a Javiana. I have many pairs of Javianas. I wear them to the pool and to the beach. That's it. Jonathan calls them habaneros. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had, I have probably gone through 20 pairs in my, my life already of Javianas. I just love them. But I was watching a TV show years ago and I will never forget what the woman said is even if you're on a yacht, you do not wear flip-flops. If you're a man, you do not wear, men should not wear sandals. You either wear like espadrilles or like a slip-on. Okay. That has stuck with me. And that's why I told you last week, because you're planning some summer travels and I'm like, you need to go buy your husband a fancy, a beautiful pair of Hermes espadrille loafers. That's why I told you to get those because everyone, you need to have, it's like, it's like a men's sandal because it's breathable. It's comfortable, but guys don't get pedicures for the most part. I mean, I do because, you know, maybe of course, but unless, I mean, if you're doing yard work, I don't give a shit, but in which case it's probably not safe because you might like drop a chainsaw or something. I don't know, but <laughs> I just have a pet peeve of guys wearing flip-flops. Well, I do too. And and so it's the t- between the Chacos, the Tevas. Those aren't even flip-flops, though. I'm sorry. Those are bad. Th- those I, I can't even address those. I know. Between that no. and the fucking like redneck guys that wear flip-flops with jeans like to a bar or whatever. I mean, I'm a little bit more lenient with that. I'm but not. just... <laughs> Just men kicking around like wearing flip flops. I don't know why it's weird. I I, I mean, I, I just think it is weird. And and I and I can spot an old navy flip flop. I can smell it from a mile away. I mean, so don't be trying to pass off dollar flip flops, you know, as like something that you can wear like out because you can't. Jonathan hates flip-flops he thinks they're ugly he hates them people at the beach like beach guys they wear rainbows those have been around since the 70s i get it you wear them on the boat like if you're fishing but you know there is sort of like a, an imaginary line drawn in the sand I, I well like that. and obviously like the people who don't care about fashion are going to wear what they want anyway and they're going to look like shit and that's fine there are people who just don't care and that's that's i mean obviously I think it's important to care about what you wear, but not everybody does. And that's fine. So I'm not shitting on someone who really doesn't care. I mean, I am, but I'm not expecting (laughs) to change them. I just can't do it. And even now, like there are so many great, I mean, women get away with sandals because they can get away, like you can get away with murder, right? Because they make so many fabulous ones. Like, and you know, my thoughts on Birkenstocks, you hate Birkenstocks. I know, but it's the only thing that I will accept it's that's the least battle to fight because people really do love Birkenstocks and they're really back in. I just don't like them. Right. And that's the thing is, it's like, I have a pair that I wear to the beach that are like the rubber ones that I bought at Nordstrom that I love, but I only ever wear them to the beach. Right. But like nowadays brands are doing collaborations with Birkenstock. Like Rick I Owen know. did one, Valentino did one. And now everybody is doing those style sandals. Like Valentino, friend of the podcast and my, my, I call her like my fashion goddess. Cause like she teaches me so much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Our friend, Jennifer, you're with me. Actually. She has the most fabulous, they're Valentino. They look like Birkenstocks kind of, and they're slip-ons and they have two straps and the co- straps are covered in leather rose petals. Yes. I remember because we went to two stores looking for those for her. Yes. I remember. We did. She had these fabulous burgundy ones and then the gold ones came out and it was, I mean, I, t- I asked everybody I knew who, does anyone have these gold ones? And nobody did. And then finally I was in New York shopping with you at Nordstrom. And I just happened to walk by the, the Valentina little section. And I asked and they're like, yeah, we have one in her size. I'm like, bingo. I called Jennifer right away. It was like, I'd won the lottery. I approve of those. I think they're actually, the gold ones specifically are very chic, but you get away with like, you love the Hermes sandals, the slip on the beach and everybody loves those. They look great. But for me, my pet peeve comes when you would wear those to dinner at a place. Like if you're, let's say in the Hamptons, if you went to like Jean George wearing those, I'd be like, come on, I know you're on vacation, but like read the room. If you're going to like a lobster shack or whatever, or even like, a, <laughs> even if you're like going to like, I don't know, fucking Serafina or something, that's fine. But like, if you're going to a nice dinner, the amount of people I've seen like at a nice dinner on the Cape on Martha's or whatever, wearing fucking flip-flops, I want to go through the roof. Cause half the time I got like a Chanel bag, a little Zimmerman dress and those Hermes slip-ons. I'm like, bitch, put a heel on. Or put on like a block heeled sandal. I mean, don't like a flip flop is just a little casual. I mean, don't you think we're splitting hairs here? I mean, it just bothers me. Okay, I might have to write a letter. Okay, we did go to Charleston, South Carolina, and we went to the Crab Shack, 
And it was fabulous. And I'm telling you, we were the best dressed people there. I was going to say, were you wearing Hermes or like, what was the situation? That was besides the point, but you're right. Beyond the flip-flops, read the room. Well, like those Valentino Rockstead with the little block heel. I love a I block love heel. Candle. It doesn't need to be super expensive. It can be from anywhere, but I just don't get it. The people who are like, we're going to a really beautiful restaurant tonight. I'm going to wear fucking flip-flops. Like, no. Uh, okay, queen. It's one yeah. thing. It's like a casual lunch, but if you're going to a nice dinner, Put some fucking shoes on for the love of God. Okay, so let's move on to something that makes you happy instead of makes you mad. Well, I have more ranting to do about summer dressing because it drives me crazy. Okay, what other fashion crimes, boo? Well, read the the room about where you're you're going, right? Because again, you dress very differently depending on where you're going for the summer. If you go to the Outer Banks, it's very different. You wear very different clothes than when you, you know, when you're going to Nantucket, right? Or when you're going to the Hamptons. Like, and this, the thing is, is it's not always people like, oh, well, it just depends on like how fancy the area is. No, it doesn't. Like there are homes in Maine that go for $10 million on the beach, but you're never going to see someone wearing a Zimmerman dress to the beach here. You're just not going to, that doesn't happen here versus in the Hamptons. It does. So like read the room and like what bothers me is again, you'll see someone in like full on, like a la- like a, like a, a woman in like elastic shorts and like a beat up t-shirt in Southampton. And I'm like, what are you doing? Maybe it's her first time there. Just just read the room. Like it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be Chanel, but like put on a pair of actual shorts with a waist, like with a, with a button and a shirt. Yeah. I can't like, I don't like people who go straight from the beach to dinner unless you're at a resort. I have very specific feelings about summer wardrobes. It really irks me. Or if you go to the crab shack. I would never, I don't eat seafood. (laughs) The only person from Maine. Among many other reasons, but I, I really don't want to eat food that comes out of a bag. What do you mean out of a bag? Is it one of those like bag places? Like, like they boil it in a bag and you cut the bag uh, open? Well, not yeah. I mean, go hack it out like Sweeney Todd. Well, they give you a plate. God, they give you a plate. In Maryland, you would die. They're known for their crabs and they dump them out of the table. You hit them with a hammer, like a, a mallet. I've been to Maryland once. Actually, I, I, was, I was just about to say, I don't have a reason to ever go to Maryland. But actually, one of my friends is from Maryland. So anyway, I you would, would die. You would die. All right. What else makes you mad, Noli? Oh, so how much time do you have? We got about 17 minutes. Hit it. Oh, where do we even begin? Oh, actually, I did the progress. So, you know, I love me a Target moment. I mm-hmm. do love a Target. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still do have an issue. Like, I don't like to buy fast fashion. I did break down and buy that Asseline book company in Zara collaboration shirt. Oh, my God. That was so funny. So, and I do believe in the power of influencers, but I'm all, because a lot of my friends are influencers and I've seen them, you know, do huge things with brands and I love it. But it was really funny to me that I've never saw something on an influencer and loved it so much right away that I needed to run out and buy it. And so when I was in New York, um, the HM collection with Simone Rocha, but okay, we'll go with that. That's different. I, I didn't see it on influencers. I saw, the, I saw the Vogue article and I was like, Ooh, and then I saw the pearl sweater and I was like, hot damn. Uh, anyway, I was laying in bed, scrolling through Instagram in the morning because it was the day after I'd had my second COVID shot. So I was a little groggy and I was about to go meet Holly and her friend, Allison, not our Allison, but now my other Allison, who's fabulous. Love her. Anyway, Love her. we were going to lunch and we were, I was on the Upper East Side. We were, I had to go over to the West Side because they, they, they both are on the West Side. And so I'm scrolling through my phone and I see this influencer I know in this fabulous shirt. I had no idea where it was from. It was like this sort of Hawaiian style, but it was a print made of travel books. And I shat my pants. And then my first thought was like, oh, it's going to be like La Double J or something super expensive and just not, you know, affordable. And then he's like, tags it as Zara and Asseline. I went, what? Oh yeah. You, so, then you of flew course, to Zara. I flew literally. to Zara. I literally jumped. I hopped out of bed, threw my clothes on, hiked to the West side an hour early in a cab because I was so like, because apparently the collection like dropped that day. And I like ran into Zara and I went upstairs and the woman's like, I don't know if we have this or not. I'm like, you are very helpful. Thank you. You and did so not I, have on flip flops. I, I tore, no, I did not. <laughs> I was wearing Gucci sneakers. Duh. And I, but like, I ran downstairs to the men's section and there it was. And I like, oh, I was so happy. And I have since worn it twice. Um, I do wish I got a bigger size because I bought one that I could wear both more as like an open over a t-shirt kind of thing at the beach, literally. I, while sitting on the beach, because I like to be chic at the beach. And I wish I'd gone, gone one size bigger because I would like to be able to wear it closed with nothing underneath. And I can with the one I have, but I like a little bit of space. But with the bigger one, when I had it open, it looked like a circus tent. So it was kind of like a catch 22. 
Okay. Well, let's move on from your fashion issues. Okay. And talk about, well, I was talking about fast fashion, but Christopher, my point was Christopher, John Rogers, Rick. So, and Alexis launched a collaboration with target. Those three brands. It is fantastic. The clothes are beautiful. Okay. Target moving up in They're the beautiful. world. I actually was having a conversation with friend of the podcast, Steph Gardella this morning, one of my favorite people in the whole world. We were just, mm-hmm. you know, yapping back and forth and catching up. And we were talking about clothes and, you know, we were, she was so proud because she's gone out of her like color comfort zone. And we were talking about that. And I was like, oh, I saw this dress from one of the collaborations. And I sent her this one Christopher John Rogers dress and one Rixo dress. She's like, oh, I actually like that. And, and so when we hung up, I was coming to record and she was going to Target to find the dress. Amazing. Good job, Steph Gardella. She's killing it. I mean, love that. It was so cool. I mean, how much does it take to get Christopher John Rogers who is one of the top designers, you know, known for the, what, you know, the inauguration and all these kinds of things. He's, you know, CFDA and all that. How does he do a collaboration for Target? It is the single most brilliant business move you can make. And I'll tell you why. Tell me why. These big brands, brands like Marika Tranzu, Alexis, uh, Christopher Kane, in some respect, Simone, who else? You know, all these, Rixo, all of these smaller brands they have a specific customer, right? Not everybody in the world is going to like Christopher John Rogers aesthetic because it's really bold. It's really big. It's big on prints and color and shape and texture all in one dress. It's a lot. When you're appealing to a customer like that, you have a very specific, you already are dealing with a smaller pool of people who are going to buy it in general. And then when you add that higher price point, it cuts it down even lower. So there's only a certain amount that you can make anyway. And these businesses are very expensive to run. It's a way to kind of get funding to either A, expand the business or for the designer to finally take a salary. It just depends. But these companies like H&M and Target pay an absolute fortune, millions and millions and millions of dollars. And so for a small brand like Christopher John Rogers or Alexis, that's a huge amount of money. And it's not like you have to deal with you know, markdown dollars and, you know, consignment and things like that when when you're selling through like department stores. You don't have to deal with that. It's just a big fat check. I'm looking at the dresses now. They are really, really cute. They're, you know, they're beautiful and they're all under $100. They're really pretty. Really, and- really cute. Ooh, I love this one. Ugh, there's one that's like half hot pink and half lighter pink. That's adorable. Good job, Christopher John Rogers, Alexis, and Rexo. Ugh, loving this. I mean, it's so it's annoying. So is it going to sell out in five seconds or what? Well, it already kind of did. Rude. Um, but you can find it in store, which is fine. Oh, I love this one. This one is like a one shoulder ruffle kind of situation, black and white print. Loving that, like a maxi dress. Ugh, yes. Okay, I'm here for this. Here for this. Love it, love it, love it. So, okay, so then he goes back to his regular collection and then now people just know. Well, it raises brand awareness and it gives him, like, you know, capital to do things. It's a huge, like, it's millions of dollars they make. But the the target customer cannot afford his regular stuff. So what happens when this is sold out? Well, that's not true, though. That's the thing is, it's like, it's not, that's not entirely true because even rich people, need to buy their everyday stuff somewhere, right? And rich people don't go to Walmart. I mean, I don't go to Walmart and I'm not rich. I just, morally, I can't go to Walmart. It bothers me. Between like the, you know, all of the Make America Great Again t-shirts, the treating your employees like shit. My mother did her master's thesis on Walmart and its ethical, unethical treatment of its employees. I can't rationalize it. So I like, I do not shop at Walmart out of principle, which means I will shop at Target. Now I may not have wealth, but I choose to spend my money on clothes. So should Christopher John Rogers make something that I really love, I will buy it. And a lot of people who shop at Target are that way. Not everybody again, but, you know, I know real housewives who shop at Target. I know, you know, lawyers who shop at Target, doctors who shop at Target. They can afford those things. They're just not used to spending the money in that area. So say a doctor goes into Target, you know, this woman's a surgeon and she walks into Target to get some toilet paper And she sees these dresses and she like buys one and she loves it. She has the income to spend on his regular clothes. She just hasn't necessarily thought about it before. And if she really loves this dress, she got a target. She will spend the money on the bigger one, but that's not really the goal. That's like a byproduct and a a great, if it happens, not so great. If it doesn't, the point is, is he gets capital up front. He gets money. Yeah. It's not looking for a long-term sustainable thing. It's like a boost in capital that you all of a sudden have this money to work with. 
I understand. I, I love it. It's just really cool that designers will do that and that they will, you know, take the time to make their product available to a larger market. I respect that. Mad respect. Some people like the bitchy fashion people like, oh, well, it cheapens the brand. Honey, they're laughing all the way to the bank. They don't care. It's not like they're designing for Target forever. It's just a drop. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I I love it. I'm looking at it now. I think it's great. And I mean, in other, it's cool to figure out what's going on in the fashion world and the news. And and now that these designers are collaborating with Target, who else is coming up? That's what I want to know. Well, I mean, the past 10 years, they've done who? They've done Alexis, Rixo, Christopher John Rogers, Lisa Marie Fernandez, Carly Cushney, P- Victoria Peter Beck, Peter Peter Pilato, Pilato, Roland Moray, Mark Jacobs. Victoria Beckham. Yeah, they've done a lot. They do a lot. But theirs is also more more attainable than usually the H&M ones, to be honest. Anyway, so when you're packing for your summer trips, you had a rant about this, Nolan. What were you going to say about packing? Just read the room. Just read, read the, the room. room. Know your audience. Know your audience. Exactly. Know where you're going. Don't wear some whack shit to a summer wedding. Don't do that. That's my biggest pet peeve is people who underdress for a wedding. I can't stand that. Bastards. And it's just, if you're going to a wedding and it's casual, it still doesn't mean that you can wear some shit that you wear every day. You still have to look really good. And a lot of people don't know what that means. A lot of people don't understand that. Oh, the wedding, it's casual. Well, that doesn't mean you roll up in some shit that you wear every day. You still should. It's still special right? It still should, you should look good and look nice. It, that's all subjective, I guess, to, to your style. No, I agree with that. I just think it, I, I'm also very traditional when it comes to weddings. Like, you know me, we've had an argument about this a million times. I'm very traditional. The only thing that's traditional about me is my stance on events and what you should and shouldn't wear. Like we have our funeral argument all the time. I believe that you really should only ever wear black to a funeral. Even if it is, doesn't matter who it is, where it is, how casual it is, you should only wear black to a funeral. I wouldn't wear white to a wedding unless it was a black and white dress code. I'm very formal in that kind of a thing, right? People who don't dress up well enough for a wedding, to me, it's the ultimate form of disrespect. It just says, I don't care enough about you because I don't care enough about you to put my best foot forward. And that to me is unacceptable. I would rather be overdressed than underdressed. I've been to some redneck weddings, okay? Is that appropriate to say these days? Uh, Who cares? Please. I have been to some redneck weddings and some people know and some people don't know. People that don't go to a lot of weddings, they don't know. And it's very clear when you show up and you don't know. But hey, you know, there's been bigger fashion crimes committed, believe me. But, you know, it's important that. Oh, but if like a guy wears sandals to a summer wedding, dead to me. (laughs) They should be put to death. For you should one. see all these, you know, the Southerner, you know, Southern people that get married on the beach and they either don't wear shoes or they <laughs> see, wear. No shoes is fine. I think no shoes is kind of chic. Everyone's in a gown, no shoes. I think it's kind of fun. It's kind of like salt of the earth meets, you know, Bergdorf Goodman. I'm kind of here for that. Then you got to go to the party and all the guys are wearing flip flops. That's a no, no to you. No, you put on a driving shoe or a loafer. It's not that difficult. <laughs> it really isn't. God, these people annoy me. And it's like the kids that wear like bedroom, you know, bedroom shoes to school. That was. Oh, like I a- had one of those when I was in high school. There was one girl, and I actually, you know, I had several run-ins with her because she was, you know, nuttier than a freaking bag of trail mix. Let me tell you. <laughs> I get it. Some kids are going through something. If you have really terrible depression and you don't want to get out of bed, and you, it just, it's all you can do to come into school, and you're wearing sweatpants. I get it. It does happen, but there's no excuse ever to roll into bed, into school, in your pajamas with the comforter around you. (laughs) And this was not like a one-time thing. This girl just did this. And I said, who are the parents that are telling her this is it? Because I knew she had like, it wasn't like, you know, she had a a terrible home situation. She had two parents who were together and, you know, whatever. I mean, mind you, not the nicest people, but whatever. I'm like, who is telling her that this is an acceptable thing to do in the world? She was wearing a blanket to school. No, it was literally the fucking bedspread. And so <laughs> finally, like, I didn't say anything. But again, I was raised by my mother. Like, it's just such a foreign concept that someone thinks this is acceptable. And again, if this is all, if it's, if all you can do is get out of bed, I get it, but put a pair of sweatpants on. I want to talk about swimwear for just a second when we were going back to the subject of read the room. You know, when people are buying bathing suits, I think a lot of people who don't want to spend money on bathing suits will just wear some old shit. And if you're hanging out, it doesn't fit. I just want to say that hands down, 
if your shorts are too short, if you're a guy, your swim trunks are too short or they're too tight or your ass or your boobs are hanging out, it's time for a new bathing suit. And a bathing suit is a large investment. I will definitely give you that because they're not cheap anymore and you really get what you pay for. I need support in the butt and on the backside. I pay a lot of money for my bathing suits because I need that. Your support. Fa- I was going to say your favorite swimsuits are all, and you be- you bellyache about the cost of them because they are astronomically expensive. But then once you have them, you're like, because your favorite are Dolce and Gabbana. Because they cut for real people. But they cost a fortune. It's not like it's a small investment, but, and you're always like, oh, they're so expensive. But then you get it. And you're like, this is the best thing I've ever done. I know. And it's like, you're paying all this money for very little fabric and it's really annoying. However, it is a really good fitting bathing suit for me and that's why i pay for it i'm not in a bathing suit all summer i don't have a pool but i am going on vacation so i want to look cute i don't actually have like a matching cover-up and da da da. i have a girlfriend who wears matching bikini with her matching earrings and matching sunglasses god love her for it it's not that serious for me but a good fitting bathing suit is key and it doesn't mean you have to go too old and go too matronly because i had another client who i had to bring her back down because her bathing suits were too old make sure it fits i don't think a bathing suit can be too matronly. well i mean maybe a little bit yes yes women that wear or trying to cover their midsection you know they wear a tankini and it looks grandma you can get away with more in a very sexy one piece I mean, the styles, the miracle suit is a goddamn miracle. Okay. Go on miraclesuit.com, see what they have. I mean, it's very slimming. Nolan, you don't have this issue, but women have this issue. So it's important if you're worried about your stomach or your, you know, whatever, it's important to get the support where you need it. If you're going to be around people, if you want to feel confident on the beach or at the pool, get a good fitting bathing suit. Don't be hiding in the corner. And don't, you know, wear some ragged ass bathing suit from 10 years ago. Amen. That's my soapbox for today. That's fair. That's fair. That's that's valid. I mean, that's the one thing you don't buy for your mom, but I don't know how often she's in a bathing suit. And she goes to the beach every day in the summer. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Well, and, because we live so close. It's like after work, she just pops over to the beach every day. How come you're not buying her bathing suits? Not my worry. Oh, okay. You've I just don't care enough. <laughs> I just don't care enough. You have bigger fish to fry with her. Well, I mean, like I also, I mean, oh, I still haunted when we, you and I went to the outlets and I spent a fortune on a, a, a bathing suit from Villa Brequin and then I proceeded to lose oh. 100, like a hundred pounds, which was great. Then Nolan lost all his weight. And so. then I couldn't wear it because it was I so it, I had to sell it and I lost a forge. I lost, uh, I think I made 20 bucks. Like, so, I mean, I lost 80 bucks on it, which sucked. And it was so <laughs> cute. It had like these little velvet turtles. It was so adorable. So cute. Any last thoughts for summer wardrobe? Anything do not do, do not wear, do not go there? No, I think I, I think I said enough today. <laughs> <laughs> I think I made enough enemies. <laughs> Which is fine. Like, come after me. What's the difference? And listen, it's okay. It's okay. The first step is awareness. You know, I've had three clients this week and um, the, there's been a lot of issues. There's been a lot of problems. But, you know, it's mostly that people just don't know what to do. So if you have any questions about what to pack, where to go, What's going on? I mean, Nolan really is a luxury lifestyle consultant at this point. Let's just be honest. I mean, you know, he is a wealth of of information when it comes to good places to go, hang out, what your vibe is, reading the room. You know, we were going to go to one place and Nolan's like, "Uh uh-uh, it's it's going to be too annoying for Jonathan. Y'all need to go here. So, I mean, I'm glad that he knows that kind of stuff, right? Maybe I do know it all. I mean, maybe you do. I I, I mean, you don't know everything, but you know a lot. You don't know them more than me, but you know, that's debatable. (laughs) But I mean, summer clothes, my summer wardrobe, we just got a lot of shorts for me. I'm into a high waisted short. Nolan opened my eyes. It was a whole new world saying that I could wear shorts. I didn't think I could. And now look at me. I have a wealth of shorts in my closet and I'm going to wear them this summer. Well, I know. And once we get off this call, we're going to talk about sandals. Oh, we're going to talk about sandals. Okay. All right. This has been the Fashion of Crimes podcast. Follow us. Hang out with us. Send us smoke signals. Write us a letter. Snail mail. Hang out with us. Be in our posse. We have some great episodes coming up. Please download, subscribe, and leave us a review. This has been Summer Wardrobes, Do's and Don'ts from the Fashion of Crimes podcast. This has been amazing. Nolan, thank you for dropping some knowledge on us. We appreciate it. This has been Fashion of Crimes podcast, and we are out.